Now let's take a look at the modifier stack because this I think is the most important similarity to Houdini and Max. Let's hide our box for now. Let's jump into our geo node and let's just look at our sphere. And we also need to click the node itself in order to view its attributes. You can look at one thing in Houdini and look at the attributes of something else and you'll see a ghost of that object too. So we're looking at the sphere but we're playing with the attributes of the box. Here's the box's attributes up here. Let's view the sphere and view its attributes. Spacebar G to center view. So we're just looking at a sphere, looking at a sphere. Let's do something we'd normally do in Max, which is let's say we'll drop down an edit poly. We'll select some faces. Instead of doing an extrude here, I'm going to drop down an extrude node. Face extrude. And I'm just going to extrude it a little bit. So we've got a little ball with a bowl cut. Now over here, let's just move these guys off to the side a little bit. How do we do that in Houdini? Well, as most things in Houdini, there's about a hundred different ways to do just about anything. But in this case, we're going to hit the select arrow or hit S for select. And we, we notice that we are selecting faces. And you also notice we didn't drop down an edit poly to do that because when you're in the geometry context, you're always able to select all of the components of an object. And Houdini calls faces primitives. So if we go up here, we're in select mode. We could also, also select edges. Those are the same names. And then you have points and vertices. A lot of the time, or most of the time, you're going to work in points and not vertices. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, let's go to primitives. We have a selection and we want to extrude it. Just like we did over in Max. Well, if we go to the model view, no, if we go to the poly view, polygon, hit poly extrude, we'll notice a couple things. We've got this antenna shooting off of our sphere. We also notice in the network editor, a new node was automatically plopped down here. So let's grab this handle and move it. And we'll see it does what you probably expected it was gonna do. It's a manipulation handle. And of course, over here, the attributes of this node are visible and we can also type it in here. And there's, there's a, there are other, other options that you can play with but we're going to keep things simple. So we extruded that a little bit. Now we've got something that looks similar to max. Data flows up the modifier stack. Data flows down in the network view. Okay, let's do something a little different. Let's look at our box. Only the box. Over here and in max, let's turn off our sphere, turn on the box. Hit Z, and we're just looking at a box. All right, I'm gonna make my box four meters high. All right, so it's more of a tower. I think I'll give it about 10 height segments. And I want to twist it about 90 degrees, and then I wanna bend it. Okay, I have a twisted and bent tower. Let's just add a turbo smooth at the top just for fun. Let's give it two iterations so we get a nice smooth twisty clay thing. All right, let's do the same thing over here in Houdini. You might be able to figure it out yourself, but let's just do it. Move this uh, distracting stuff out of the way. I'm even gonna hold Y, cut this line, move this over, let's clear things up. We got a box. The fields in Houdini are always X, Y, Z. And don't forget that in Houdini, Y is up. And in max, Z is up. If we want this to be tall, then we need to make it grow in the Y axis. And we want it to have more divisions in the Y. Let's give it 11. Okay, we want to twist 
our box the same way we did in Max. Now Houdini is very particular about where you're working because the program operates differently depending on how you're working. If I dropped a twist node over here, it's not going to work the way we expect. If I drop a twist node inside the 3D view by hitting tab twist, it's going to work the way we expect. I'll show you what I mean. If I drop a twist, I just I drew a handle, hit tab, start typing twist, hit enter. I've got a twist node, drops down. I'll hit the eyeball so I can see what it's doing. I see no manipulation handles. Let's remember we hit enter in order to see any relevant handles that are associated with the node. Hitting enter will pop them up if they haven't popped up by themselves. Now we'll see immediately something doesn't look right. I can turn this little twister guy, but it's not even capturing the whole object. What is it doing? Why is it doing that? Well, I don't know why they've chosen to make it work like this, but that's how it works. Let's just delete this twist. In the 3D view, I'll hit tab, start typing twist, hit enter. Now at the bottom of the screen, it says select the geometry you want to affect. So I need to select the whole object, hit enter, and then hit enter again if I want to deform the whole object. And now we have a node handle that is around the whole box, and it's actually facing the way we expect. And we can change our twist over here, change it to 90. And now we've got a twist like we expect. So we have a box and a twist. We have a box and a twist, right? Looks exactly the same. Now let's bend. We'll hit tab, start typing bend, hit enter, select the geometry we want to affect, which is our whole guy, hit enter to complete. If we want the whole object to be deformed, we hit enter again. Now we've got a new manipulator tool and it's selecting the whole object and we can just drag it and bend it. And if we scroll up here, we'll see that our bend can be typed in, just like Max. Let's type in 90. Let's go to our bend and Max. We'll see our little dude is 90. Very cool. And then we want to add a smooth, right? A turbo smooth. We'll select that. Now in this case, we can add a subdivide and we don't have to worry about what we've selected or manipulator tools or, or anything like that. It just takes what's flowing out of the bend and subdivides it. And we'll set this to two as well. And we'll see, we have exactly the same result. Okay, what else is similar about the modifier stack and the network view? Well, you can turn turn things on and off real easy. We can turn off the bend. We could bypass the bend over here by clicking this yellow bypass button. We get the same result, right? We could turn off our turbo smooth just by clicking it. We can turn off the subdivide. Okay. We can move things around. We could put the turbo smooth after the twist. Can then get the same result. We could do that here too. We can turn these back on. We can shake things in Houdini and it makes them let go. We can put our subdivide in here. So it goes box, twist, subdivide, and then bend. Click our node to see the final result. All right, very similar. Almost exactly the same thing. Okay, now that we've compared the modifier stack and the network editor and seen how they're similar, how are they different? Well, the modifier stack is tied to each object. Every object has their own stack, right? We start with the box, we work our way up. In Houdini, the network view is more like a recipe. We can plug any geometry we want into this little recipe and we'll get different results. Like we could drop down a sphere and plug that in 
instead of the box, we need a sphere that's made out of polygons. And now we've warped our sphere. That doesn't look that interesting. We could drop down another primitive object, like a torus. And our little recipe applies to whatever we plug into it. In fact, many of the nodes in Houdini are actually recipes themselves. For example, if we take a peek at this bend, we'll see there's a little lock on it because this is actually a sub-network. And if we double click on it, we can see it's actually another little recipe that has inputs. It's got a bunch of VEX code telling it how to handle the geometry and what to do with it. And then it spits it out at the bottom. So in essence, in Houdini, we're building a lot of recipes built on other recipes to do things. And that's the way we have to start thinking when we're using Houdini, that we're building procedures to make things. It's fundamentally how it was designed to be used. And Houdini makes it very easy to package up these little recipes into things called HDAs, or Houdini Digital Assets, where you can move from computer to computer, and these HDAs can be sent over to Maya, or Max, or Cinema 4D, I think, using the Houdini engine. And this is fundamentally how Houdini works. It works on these node networks that are recipes to do other things. It could be modeling, animating, transforming, just about everything in Houdini is built this way. In other words, Houdini is a recipe making machine. Of course, we've only scratched the surface of what Houdini is and what it can do, but I think it's important to start simple, start small, and find a way into Houdini that we can relate to. We need to learn to walk before we can run. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay tuned for other Max to Houdini transition tutorials. Let me know in the comments if there are other comparisons you'd like to see between the two programs. As always, whack the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time.